Welcome to Points North. Today on the show, we are heading out onto beautiful Lake of the Woods, out onto the ice. Last time you saw us on Lake of the Woods, it was water, but today we're talking all about ice fishing and ice shacks. And as you can tell, some days are better than others, but today we're all bundled up, we're dressed for it, and we're heading out to check out the huge winter culture that happens all over Northwestern Ontario. We are going to be talking to the host of Fishy with Gussie, Jeff Gustafson, to get the scoop on what you need when you're out ice fishing. We are even gonna show you an elaborate ice shack on wheels. Stick around, we have a great show for you today. We are with Fishing with Gussie host Jeff Gustafson and Muggins, who's now a celebrity, and we're here to talk basics with ice fishing. So, Jeff, give us a rundown. What do I have in my hand right now? <laughs> that's a hand auger, and we need you need an auger to drill holes. So that's sort of the old-fashioned way. Early in the season, um, when the ice isn't that thick, these things are awesome. But once you get to you know January, February, March. The ice gets thick these things are a real workout to well drill we're with, talking so. about thick how how many inches of ice uh, well i would say if it's less than 10 inches less than eight inches then the hand auger is good because it's really light you can carry it around um and a little exercise never hurt anybody but you start drilling through like three three feet of ice like we'll have in march with that and yeah. it's going to be a an arm burner yeah an arm burner big time there you but, go so then we get the power augers. Uh, you can see I have a little bit bigger um, auger on here. And uh, yeah, these are the ticket for drilling through, you know, that thicker ice. They're fast, but they're a little bit heavier. Um, you know, you can't, you can't just throw them in the back of your snowmobile sleigh and, and, or they're going to get beat up. So there's a little bit of a trade-off. The hand augers are definitely nice, but when you get late, late into the winter, the, the power augers are a little bit better. Um, couple other essentials for for going out ice fishing are uh, electronics like this little flasher uh, these things will show you how deep it is they'll show you fish that are on this on the bottom they'll show you your lure and they show you how fish interact with your lure so you can figure out you know how to jig your your bait to trigger those fish to strike there's no question that they help you catch more fish. In fact, I don't even really like to go ice fishing if I don't have this thing with me. So, they're, oh, there they're, you go. Yeah, they're good. Jeff Gustafson said. <laughs> well, you know, as far as rods and reels go. Well, okay. My question is, why are ice fishing reels so much tinier, or just, rods so much tinier? Just so that they're a little bit easier to cart around. If you're fishing in a shack like this. Uh, which we'll set up, you don't have as much room. So if you have a six foot fishing rod, you're gonna be banging it into the wall. And, right. Um, yeah, so, so they're equally as strong? Well, you know, you don't have quite as much, you know, power with a short rod like this, like you would with a longer one, but um, just for, for you know, sitting there jigging, they do the job and they come in different actions. You know, this is sort of a heavier version for walleyes or lake trout. This one's really light for crappies and perch. So that's kind of the, the deal. But yeah, the shorter rods are a little easier. You still see people that use the long open water rods when they're out there, but if you want to fish inside of a shelter, you know, and on those crappy days, you definitely yeah. need the short rods. Like today. Like today, today we're experiencing, although it's beautiful, the temperature is beautiful, we're experiencing one of those not so no. perfect so, days to not have a shack. No, and I'm going to Florida here in about a week, so I'm just counting down the days. Yeah, it's not fair. <laughs> All right, if anybody's afraid of being cold when they're out ice fishing, I got the answer for you. Um, these fish shacks, portable fish shelters like this, they come in a number of different varieties and styles, and they're the ticket, man. I, uh, you can get in here, put a heater on, and be warm in pretty much any condition. Well, it just put a whole lot of fun into ice fishing for me, because I don't have a shack. I yeah. don't have a shack, and we have children. Yeah, so exactly. You, can keep, you warm. can keep the kids in here and they're everybody's happy and so there was um, you were talking about um, ice fishing these days and we were talking about winter culture, so inside this little number <laughs> there's this... actually it, it comes with everything. Yeah, and we'll uh, I'll open it up here. But yeah, this is how it sort of sets up so you can 
sit, pull your seat up and just kind of sit there and you have a hole right here and in a way if it's though. raining or snowing or windy you're in here and you don't notice any of that stuff but yeah ice fishing is definitely fun and if you live in this part of the world you should definitely take advantage of it because we have some of the best ice fishing opportunities in the world all right well we're gonna go take a look at some walleye fishing on darlington bay and uh this is from the super exciting brand new season of Fishing with Gussie 2013, mm -hmm. which kicks off in March. So enjoy this little clip. Today we're fishing on the Winnipeg River, just real close to Kenora. Um, not, a, not a secret spot by any means. Um, you can look around and there's, you know, it's kind of midwinter. There's ice shacks set up all over the place. Guys are out in their trucks. There's some portable shelters set up. Uh, it's fairly cold today, but um, nice sunny afternoon and I think we can catch some fish so we're gonna give it a try. We're gonna be using a new lure from Northland Tackle called the Whistler Spoon. Probably most of you guys have not seen it yet. It's new, new out this year for, for 2013 and uh, it's gonna be a hot little ice lure. So we're gonna put it to the test today and see if we can catch some walleye. So just to show you that Whistler Spoon that I sort of talked about at the start of the show that's it right there. It's, it's kind of the Northland Macho Minnow body, which is a beveled edge spoon, and it's really erratic when it falls, but it's got this Whistler blade up above it, and it, and it uh, really creates a unique action. Um, I like to tip them with a minnow head. If you use a whole minnow, it's too big. It makes the, the whole package of the bait too big, and, uh, and the thing's not going to have a lot of action. This one might be an eater size, though, maybe. Oh. No, a little short. They got a slot size out here that, and Jay was sort of talking about it earlier, and that one's not going to quite make it. That's a small fish, but we all like action. And I got another one down there, so I'm going to get this guy back down. Got him. Not as big as the last one, but if we were on Lake of the Woods, I think that'd be a good eater, but out here, I think that would fall in the slot size, I'm pretty sure. But holy talk about eat that bait. Look at that. That's getting it in you. It, it's been a cold afternoon, but you could feel that temperature really going down here the last, uh, the last half hour now that, since that sun went over the trees. Yeah, that sure has, and you know we had uh, we had a real good flurry of fish just uh, just in the sun was going down there, and uh, you know things are starting to quiet down. Living in Canada, you're gonna if you want to go ice fishing all winter, you're gonna go out in some cold weather, and and uh, yeah, you yeah. know what, you get all the gear. That's We've right. got all the gear. We, get, we dress for it, and uh, you know you take advantage. We got shelters. We you know you got uh, we got a vehicle. You can warm up in there if you need to. You got. Uh, Whatever, and it's just about having fun and being mobile and catching some fish, and uh, you know, it's, uh, it's what we like to do, so that's why we're out here. All right, well, thanks, thanks for uh, coming out, and we'll, uh, we'll do it again, I'm sure. Oh yeah, probably sooner than later. <laughs> I want to thank Jeff for his time today. He is super busy preparing to go off to Florida, but we are going to take a quick break. And when we come back, more ice fishing and ice shacks on Lake of the Woods. Welcome back. And seeing how we're heading out on the ice today to do some ice fishing and to catch up with some ice fishermen and check out some cool shacks, we decided to catch up with Steve, Steve Harkoff from the MNR to get some of the particulars about what we should know when we're out on the ice. So Steve, what are some of the things that people should have on them at all times in case they meet a conservation officer? Uh, people are required to have a fishing license, as most people know. and. Uh, 
they don't also need a fishing license they need an outdoors card so what an outdoors card is at first is a uh, it's a card that allows you to buy licenses with it um, so it's good for three years and with that you can buy all the different options types of fishing license whether it be a one day a seven day a one week or, or, or actually an annual license or a three-year license and uh, they're required to be carried together while you're angling. So if you have your outdoors card, make sure that you keep your license with that because that's what we'll be looking for. And it's an offense not to carry them with you. So what are some of the other rules that people need to abide by? Like, can you have 14 different holes and you know, 14 different fishing rods on the go? Yeah, th there's, there's no limit to how many holes you, you actually drill in the ice. There is a limit to how many lines you use. Okay. Uh, generally, uh, you can only use two lines through the ice. It is important that uh, people do review the regulations for where you are fishing though, because there are exceptions uh, depending on what, what water body you're on. The, the exceptions are found in the regulation summary. Yeah. The regulation summary right here is uh, printed annually. And when you go through that, uh, it, uh, it, it will show the zone. We're in fisheries management zone five here. Okay. Uh, and uh, Lake of the Woods is included in that. Winnipeg River is included in that. And there's exceptions on those different water bodies. And sometimes even bays, are, are, there's exceptions. So. so do you sometimes need different fishing licenses for different zones as well? No, fish. the only uh, difference in fishing licenses is your residency. So if you're from Manitoba, you would need a Canadian resident license. If you're from Ontario, you need an Ontario resident license, and there's also a non-resident U.S. license for our U.S. Uh, guests. So what are the most common issues when you're out on the ice and you're checking shacks and fishermen? What are some of the most common issues that you see out there? Uh, we, we, with regards to issues, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's unpredictable. But I mean, we run into people with over limits. Uh, people fishing with extra lines, basically neglecting to read the book and, and understanding the rules before they're going out. Excellent. So um, is there any other type of safety tip that you would like to tell people um, before they head out on the ice? Uh, know the ice conditions, uh, know where you're traveling. There's all kinds of local knowledge at bait shops and uh, you know local people that know the ice well. Stick to the main paths and uh, you know uh, be safe out there with regards to uh, riding snowmobiles and uh, and using vehicles out on the ice. I mean there's all kinds of restrictions and rules around using off-road vehicles, snowmobiles and ATVs out there so just be safe using, uh, using that equipment as well. Excellent. Well, thanks for your time today, Steve. We're super pumped to get out on the ice. Stick around. If you are joining us earlier in the program, we were talking to Jeff Gustafson, who's a host of Fishing with Gussie, and he showed us a portable ice shack. We're about to go inside and bug these guys and see what their ideal day on the ice is. But first, we're gonna catch up with Bruce Beringer, who made an elaborate ice shack out of an old water tank. Shelley Bujold has this story. Hi, I'm Bruce Berenger. This is my ice shack. Come on in, we'll have a tour. As you can see, it's very white inside. The reason being is it's an old water tank. Uh, it belonged to a friend of mine, Brent LeMay, who was sitting in his yard, so I had a little bit of an idea to make it into a bigger ice shack. So we uh, made the floor a little bigger and elevated it so you could stand up inside and um, put some seats in. We have a heater and um, it's all ready to go. The first year we had it out um, on, on Lake of the Woods was just the other side of uh, 12 Mile Portage and my brother-in-law and I, Rick, uh, we got a lot of time out here fishing. Uh, he's retired also so uh, we were going out in the mornings. Um, several times because of the heater 
he would uh, accidentally move my rod and put the fishing line against the heater and all of a sudden I'd have no uh, no line left. So it would uh, be retying and, and uh, um, putting a new jig on and putting it back down and keeping an eye on him to make sure he wasn't accidentally putting my fishing line against the, uh, the heater. You'll notice it has nice pink seats, they're made of styrofoam. That was my daughter's request because she says she wants to keep her keep herself warm while she's in here. It has four holes to fish out of. Um, four holes are a little tight when you only have two people in here, but um, you can do it. Um, we can get it up to about uh, 80 degrees Fahrenheit in here. We have fresh air coming through and uh, you can bring your lunch. Have a nice comfortable day on the ice. We built uh, our, our shack on, on skis. You see there's three skis there. Uh, they have Teflon on them and it makes it very easy to move. The fun of ice shacks, I think, is to see um, how cheaply you can build them and how much stuff you can scrounge to uh, to make them. And uh, you know, it's just where your imagination goes. And as long as you build them so that they're, they're safe and they're not gonna fall down on you, I mean, uh, wherever your imagination takes you. Welcome back. I've cozied up with Mike and Graham in their little portable ice shack and these two are actually fishing guides in the summer. So Graham's here visiting and doing a little ice fishing on his holiday. So Graham, what are some of the essentials that you take out with you when you're ice fishing? Uh, heater, flasher, rods, tackle, minnows, the hut. The hut. Tunes. I heard they usually bring tunes. I heard the iPod got left behind. Yes, we did, we did leave it behind. <laughs> so, and when you go to set up, do you set up for the day in a spot, or does it depend on whether the fish are biting? Uh, it depends if the fish are biting. We'll move around. It's more convenient to have a portable hut to move around in. Yes. Well, thank you, boys, for letting us invade your little um, fishing affairs here. And we are going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we are going to finally show you an elaborate ice shack from Vermilion Bay. Welcome back. We are on beautiful Lake of the Woods and the last time you saw us we actually sailed right by here on a sailboat but today we are checking out winter culture. We're ice fishing and checking out ice shacks and we're finally going to show you the pimped out ice shack invention from Vermilion Bay. Tommy Johnson has this story. Your money, cash money. 100 believe it. Just shy now of 7,000 views, this YouTube video has created a lot of talk amongst winter-loving residents in northwestern Ontario. Ice fishing enthusiasts, meet your match. This is the Batmobile, a portable four-man ice shack on tracks. Uh, for quite a few years I had an idea of uh, building a mobile ice shack using uh, two snow machines put together. We're in the resort business here and we do a lot of ice fishing in the wintertime and uh, we were always thinking about ways to uh, make things easier and more comfortable for ourselves and our guests. Created by combining two 1988 Scandic snow machines, Clark, along with his two friends, set out to build something that could get them from point A to point B on the ice in a much more efficient way. Two days later, the Batmobile was born. There's uh, two engines, uh, two separate drive lines. We have the primary clutch and the secondary clutch. Uh, driving the chain case and we have reverse on both chain cases and then essentially it runs down and drives the two separate tracks underneath. It was probably the most interesting project I've ever uh, been involved in. Uh, it was uh, a lot of fun, it was quick but it was a lot of fun. What's nice is you know even on a day like today when it's uh, uh, minus uh, 25 and uh, winds blowing you know, like a minus 30 windshield factor at least now, you can uh, drive out to your fishing hole, uh, drill your holes, and like I say, you, you can sit four people in there and fish uh, nice and comfortably with the propane heater in there. It's uh, ultimate. And then when you go to leave, all you do is uh, reel your line up and uh, start the engine, away you go. <laughs> There's no going outside and freezing. Scooting across the lake at 50 miles an hour, this machine moves. And with everything you need on board, it's an invention that really takes the sport of ice fishing to a whole new level. You can drive it right on a, uh, a double wide snowmobile trailer, pull it right on there, and uh, it's got reverse in it, so you just back it off, 
and uh, we pulled the sleigh behind, you have the auger behind you, and uh, very little pain and suffering. As far as where this invention will take them, at the moment, Clark and friends have no intentions of marketing the Batmobile. They do, however, plan to make some possible improvements, like adding liquid-cooled engines and creating a fiberglass frame. We've had lots of interest in it. A lot of friends and family have been very impressed by the whole concept. Uh, we've given lots of rides in it, of course, and uh, it's worked out really, uh, it's been a lot of fun. I've had guys uh, email me and ask me for the plans uh, 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 for it, but I, I don't really have any plans for it. We just, uh, like I say, we just built it in two days. If you're interested in finding out more about the Batmobile, follow the YouTube video instructions listed below. At Clark's Resort, just north of Vermilion Bay, Ontario, I'm Tommy Johnson. Thanks for joining us on another Points North. We wanted to remind everybody that fishing licenses expire every year on December 31st. So make sure you've renewed your fishing license for 2013. We had so much fun today. You can check out some photos on Facebook, Key Search Points North. You can also email us with some of your ice fishing and ice shack photos at cjbnpointsnorth at gmail.com or you can always find us on Twitter. Have a fantastic night and we'll see you next week. This season we've got lots of big walleyes, we've got big cats on the Red River, smallmouths, pike, muskie, you name it, you're gonna see it. We're gonna show you how to catch them and have lots of fun doing it. <laughs> this is so awesome, dude.